New Life Church. Hey guys, and welcome to New Life Church. Hello, welcome to New Life Church. Hello, and welcome to New Life Church. Hello, and welcome to our celebration service. We are so glad that you could join us here today. If this is your first time, then a very warm welcome to you all. We pray that you have a wonderful time with us and that you are truly blessed by the service. Before we hear the message, we'll be going into a time of worship. And I just want to encourage you to join in wherever you can. You can stream this from your TV, plug in your headphones, your speakers, raise your hands and let's worship God together. Yeah. 
Father, we worship you, and we know that you are the center. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and none can compare to you. No one comes in between. No one can be matched by you. Father, we worship you, we surrender, and make you the center, Lord. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it'll always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus and nothing.
your church. Jesus be the center of your church. Jesus be the center of your church. And every knee will bow, and every tongue shall confess you, Jesus.
just want to thank you. We just want to honor and glorify your glorious name, Lord. Father, you are the King of Kings and you are the Lord of Lords. You are Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. So Father, we gaze our focus onto you, O God. We turn our eyes to you, O Father, looking to you, O God, because you are the one that holds us. You are our anchor, O God. Father, I pray that you will continue to remain at the center of our lives, Lord. Father, may our gaze forever be upon you, upon your holiness. May we cry out, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Oh God, may you be at the center of our heart's affections, oh God. Father, we look to no other but you. There is no other name but the mighty and the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus at the center of our lives. Jesus at the center of everything. Everything, oh God, everything revolves around you. Father, we honor you. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And welcome to New Life Church live stream. The internet has given us worldwide connectivity, so it's no coincidence that you've been able to join us today. Why don't you comment down below right now to let us know where you're enjoying the service from and how it might be blessing you. My name is Zoe, and I'm the daughter of the Most High God, and I'll be bringing you the announcements this week. Connect groups are still on via Zoom. If you'd like to be a part of a connect group, please contact the church office on office at newlifecanterbury.org that's office at newlifecanterbury.org if you would like prayer for anything please send a prayer request to that same email address and if you would like a call back from one of our pastors indicate this on your request after 40 days daily praying and seeking the lord we are now inviting all new life members for prayer every friday night from 8 to 9 p.m. on Zoom. Dare to Dream. Our annual graduate farewell service will be held on Sunday the 24th of May at 11 a.m. on YouTube and Facebook Live. Join us as we bid farewell to our final year graduates and send them off to fulfill their purposes in Christ. As a church, we believe in the Word of God. It is the direct insight into his character and his design for our lives. We will be studying the book of 1 Corinthians this month and we encourage all to dig deep into his word as we grow in deeper fellowship with him. We're inviting everyone to join the afternoon tea and chat on Zoom after the service every Sunday at 12 p.m. Let's make every effort to keep in touch with one another. Hope to see you there. Thank you for listening. Remember to stay safe and to stay in faith, no matter the season, no matter the circumstance. We now invite you to join us as we partake in a holy communion in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We remember his body and his blood, which were bruised and shed for our sake. Please prepare your bread and your juice or wine to commemorate this. Thank you for listening to these announcements. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook pages. Like the video or leave a comment. And don't forget to click the bell button to receive notifications so you can stay in touch with everything that's happening here at New Life Church. We also encourage you to share the links on your social pages so that other people can join the family. In this time of social distancing, we do not want you to miss the opportunity of partnering with us in sharing the gospel. Your giving honors God as it allows the church to provide ministry to the body and also to fulfill the great commission of sharing the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the world. So there are a number of ways that you can give. Number one, for regular giving and offering, 
The best way to give is through standing order. So please ensure that you contact the church office at newlifecanterbury.org for more information. The second way that you can give is if you are watching this in the UK, you can also send a text message, Sunday gift as one word, followed by a space and the amount that you would like to give to 70085. So for example, if you would like to give £10, then you simply text Sunday gift as one word, followed by a space, then £10, as in the number 10, to 70085. God bless you. Worship. Everybody worships. Everyone, everywhere worships something. Whatever captivates the heart's affections, the mind's attention, and the soul's ambition essentially has our worship. We worship everything from pop icons to our jobs to our favorite sports team. While the object and method of worship vary, the act of worship does not. Oftentimes, our worship is focused on ourselves. The pursuit of fame, wealth, and personal satisfaction becomes the focus of our wants and desires, but no matter how much we worship these things, they can never satisfy the deepest longings of our soul. God has uniquely designed us with meaning and purpose. He's divinely created us in his own image. When we worship the created and not the creator, we are left unfulfilled and unsatisfied. We deny God the worship that is rightfully his. When we step into a relationship with God through his son, Jesus, our relationship with God should become elevated above every other ambition, every other affection, and every other activity. It should change everything we do. It begins to change the words we say, the decisions we make, the way we view our circumstances and see the people around us. It changes our goals, desires, and pursuits. Instead of searching for meaning and purpose in our life, it becomes the meaning and purpose of our life. Worshiping God is not limited to singing a song on Sunday morning. It's a lifestyle lived out in reverence to God, wherever he has placed you. There is no sacred and secular divide. Worship involves all of our lives, not just one part. Not just one part. That means we worship as we work, as we parent, as we go to school, as we gather around the table, as we suffer, as we compete, as we love, as we seek, as we create. All that we believe, think, say, and do should flow from our beating heart of worship. So what is worship? It's the outpouring of our lives, led by the Spirit and rooted in God's truth, devoting all we are and all we do to Him, our Creator. It's ascribing worthiness to the one who alone is worthy. Good morning, everyone. It is a great privilege to be here to stand before you to share the living word of God. It is also an honor. We thank God for this beautiful day. Today is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in. We want to thank God for his faithfulness. We want to thank God for how far he has kept us. We want to thank God for how far he has preserved us. He has been our rock. He has been our strength. Indeed, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Indeed, our safety is of the Lord and we give him praise for that. For the past four weeks, our pastors have been sharing with us the encounter that Jesus' disciples had with the risen Lord. These messages have been life transforming and to God be the glory for that. 
I remember Pastor Aaron mentioned in his message last Sunday that for our encounters to have lasting impact, that we need to remain faithful and steadfast in our walk with the Lord. And as I began to ponder on this statement, the Lord began to impress upon my heart that it seeks true worshippers, people who would live their lives as an act of worship before the living God. Therefore, I have titled my message this morning, True Worshippers. Would you bow your hearts with me as we pray? Father, we bless your name. Father, we give you praise. The entrance of your word brings light and understanding to the simple. Lord, we ask that you will open the eyes of our hearts, that we may receive what you have for us this morning. Speak to us expressly, Lord. Speak to us directly. Season your words with salt, and let it give grace to the hearers, that at the end of the day, your people will be blessed, and your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name, I pray. My text this morning will be taken from the book of John, chapter 4, from verses 19 to 26. This is the story of the Samaritan woman that met with Jesus at the well. Jesus had been traveling from Judea to Galilee, and because he was exhausted, he decided to take a break in Samaria. And this Samaritan woman came up to the well by which Jesus sat to fetch water, and she engaged Jesus in a conversation. And while they were having the conversation, the woman detected that Jesus must be a prophet because he told her everything that she had ever done. If you would turn your Bibles with me this morning to the book of John chapter 4 from verses 19 to 26. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceived that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place we are one ought to worship. Jesus said to a woman, Believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when true worshippers we worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Hallelujah. I remember reading about a business magnate years ago. This man had chains of businesses and suddenly he passed away. And all his business associates decided to honor him with a minute silence. And after the one minute silence, one of them said, well then, we've given him his one minute. Can we go back to work as usual? I wonder if that is our approach to worshiping God. I wonder if that is our approach in coming into the presence of God. I wonder if what we say is let's give God two hours on a Sunday morning and then we go back to business as usual throughout the rest of the week. The Lord is seeking those who will live their lives daily as a living sacrifice, as an act of worship before our maker. True worship is not about where we worship, but whom we worship and how we worship. In those days, places of worship were very important to them. For example, the Jews would gather in Jerusalem at certain times of the year. The Bible recorded that Anna and her family would go to Shiloh once a year to worship the Lord. But Jesus is saying, no, the whole point of my coming in the flesh and dwelling amongst you is to grant you unlimited access to the presence of the living God. You don't have to wait till a certain time, day or place before you can encounter the presence of the living God. But his presence is now within us, in our hearts. Our heart has now become the habitation of the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. And we 
we can live a life of worship. We can carry his presence with us wherever and whenever. There is unlimited access. What a great privilege that we have. In situations that we are in now, all around the world, people are in lockdown. But we pray, bless the name of the Lord that we are never locked out of the presence of the Lord. His presence is always with us. Brothers and sisters, I believe we should change ourselves if we do not capitalize and take advantage of this great privilege that we enjoy today of unlimited access to the presence of the Lord. I believe we should change ourselves if we only wait till Sunday mornings or special occasions like Christmas and Easter to enjoy the presence of the Lord and encounter his presence. The Lord longs to dwell in our hearts. He longs to dwell within us. He longs that we become his presence carriers. He longs for our heart to become his holy habitation. He longs for us to have unlimited access to him and his presence. This is the secret of a lifetime of encounters and fruitfulness that will have lasting impact. My question to you this morning is this. When the lockdown is over, what is going to be your new normal? Would you seek to live a life of worship rather than a place of worship? Would you place more emphasis on living a life of worship far and beyond a place of worship? My second point is this, this morning. If God is seeking true worshipers, that means that there are probably are false worshipers. For where you have the original, you would have the captivity. Some of us may be sincere in our worship, but sincerely wrong. If we think that going through external criteria of going to church every Sunday or on special occasions makes us right with God or is what makes us a Christian, then we are wrong. And that is false worship. God is interested in our hearts, far above the external performances and the external buildings that we put up. He desires a heart that we carry His presence. The Bible recorded in Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 13 that these people, they come near to me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on mere human rules that they have been taught. Their worship was not from a place of relationship with the Lord. If God is not the object of our worship, if his glory is not the motive for our worship, then it is false worship. Jesus is seeking true worshippers. The Bible recorded of some Jews who were sincere, but they were sincerely wrong in their worship of the Lord. In Acts chapter 17, verses 22 to 28, if you would turn your Bibles, Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious, for as I walked around, and look carefully at your objects of worship. I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The Lord who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands and he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man, he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. Though he is not far from any one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own words have said, we are his offspring. I wonder if some of us today are worshiping an unknown God. 
Worship cannot be entirely true if you don't know or have a relationship with the one that you worship. True worship is from the place of relationship. Child of God, invest time in knowing your God. Spend quality time in seeking him. The more you know him, the deeper and more genuine your worship becomes. And remember, for us to have encounters that will have lasting impacts, we need to remain faithful. And the Lord seeks out true worshippers who will remain steadfast throughout the changing scenes of life, who will remain faithful to their Lord and their maker. My third and final point is this. The Lord wants to be found. The Lord desires that we find him. But there is a price to be paid. In Jeremiah 29, 13, the Bible tells us that you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your hearts. The price that has been placed on us now is to seek God with all of our hearts. My question is this this morning, are we seeking God with all of our hearts? This same question Jesus placed to the rich young ruler. There was a rich young ruler that approached Jesus. And we will read this from the book of Luke chapter 18, from verses 18 to 23. Luke 18, 18 to 23. A rich young ruler approached Jesus and said, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit the eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked no one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. All this I have kept since I was a boy, the man said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. Perhaps today, there is that thing that we are clinging up to. Perhaps today, the fears of this world, the cares of this world is distracting us and taking the pride of place in our heart. The Lord is speaking to us today. Choose whom you will serve. The Bible encourages us and reminds us that no man can serve two masters. It's either you serve the one or you despise the other. The Lord is asking us to seek him with all of our hearts. And when we do, we will find him because the Lord wants to be found, that we may enjoy a lifetime of encounter in the presence of the Lord. There was another account in the Bible of a man who sold everything he had that he might buy a precious possession. If you would turn your Bible again with me to the book of Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. The Bible says, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Sometimes we need to pause and ask ourselves, what am I chasing after? What am I seeking after? Am I seeking the presence of the or am I caught up and entangled in the cares of this world? God wants to be found by those who are willing to seek him above all else, by those who are willing to seek him with all of their hearts. God is seeking true worshipers who will bring him pleasure and make his name great in this world. Finally, I would like to close by reminding us of the words of Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12 and in verse 1. Paul says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, that you may present your bodies a living sacrifice that is holy and pleasing unto the Lord, that this indeed is your true worship. 
So the Lord desires that we would give ourselves, we will give our lives as a living sacrifice, that we will live a life of worship before our maker. Remember, Pastor Aaron told us last Sunday that if we must allow our encounters to have lasting impact, we must live a life of faithfulness and steadfastness. And faithfulness will lead to fruitfulness in our walk with the Lord. My question to you this morning is this. What is going to be your new normal when this lockdown is over? Remember, it is not where you worship that is as important as who you worship. Who you worship is much more vital than where you worship. Would you live a life of continuous encounter by living a life of worship before the Lord? The Lord is seeking true worshipers. Just like Joshua said, seek ye whom you will serve this day. If you will serve the Lord, the Lord says, seek me with all of your heart. Shall we bow our heads to pray? Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word. Lord, I ask that you will strengthen us and help us, that we may be true worshippers, even as you have required, living a life of worship, carrying your presence wherever we go, that in and through us the name of Jesus will be magnified and glorified in our world today. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are about to take communion in a few moments and I hope you've got your bread and wine or juice if you haven't got wine to hand. Before we do that, I want to read the instructions Paul gave to the church at Corinth about the Lord's Supper. And this is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 23 onwards. And he said this, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Before we break bread, I want us to bear three things in mind. And the first thing is to remember, second, to rejoice, and the third, to revere. We have to remember what the Lord did for us on the cross, that through his death and resurrection, we are able to be reconciled as sons and daughters of the Most High God. I want us also to rejoice because we are able to partake in the nature and inheritance of Christ. We partake with his nature spiritually, but we also partake in his ministry here on earth in reconciling the whole world to God. The third thing is that we have to take this holy ordinance with reverence, revering the gift of salvation, revering the God of creation, and also who we are in him. So with that in mind, I want us to pray before we take communion. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you that you are with us and for us. We thank you for your love that you poured out incessantly upon us through Christ on Calvary Cross. Lord, as we partake in Holy Communion this morning, I pray that your blessings will be with us. Your presence will also dwell with us. You will cause us to, re to remember what you did for us and remind us of our holy and righteous ministry of reconciling the whole world to yourself. Lord, bless us. Bring healing, bring wholeness, and bring hope as we partake in Holy Communion this morning. Amen. So why don't you go ahead and take the bread and the wine.
rest alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground far through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in hell, let's faith, this gift of love. And righteousness scored by the ones he came to save to long the cross as Jesus died the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ His body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory. privilege to know that in Christ alone our hope is found. 
that our hope is not rooted. Our hope is not found in our spouse, the amount of money that we have, our jobs, our living status. It's, it's not found in any of those things, but our hope is found in Christ alone. Father, we thank you and we are reminded that though things may be falling, may seem like they're crumbling around us, oh God, you remind us that the present sufferings, the things that we are going through right now is nothing to be compared to the future glory that we will have in you. Father, we thank you that you took the place that we should have taken, oh God, and that is because of your limitless, your eternal love towards us, almighty Father. You died the death that we should have died, almighty God. And for that, we give you praise and glory and honor. And Father, when our gaze seems to wander, align us, remind us that in you, our hope is found, oh God that in you we have joy, that in you we have peace, that in you all things hold together. Glorious Father, we thank you and we pray that today our worship has been pleasing, has been honourable in your sight, O oh God. We thank you and glorify you are holy because you are wonderful, you are mighty, and you are king, the sovereign king who reigns over everything. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope you enjoyed this time with us and we look forward to celebrating with you next week. Why don't we stand so we can share the grace together? May the grace of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Have a victorious and a spirit-filled week. God bless you.